Hi everyone! Along with several other chord types present in the four diatonically harmonized hexatonic scales are the major and parallel minor triads located on each degree of the scale's first augmented triad. Given their location, these major and minor chord pairs are related by chromatic major third and collectively form a series of chords which in various guises have been used since at least the classical era and which are now often known as a hexatonic cycle. It should be noted that while composers may exclusively use a cycle's chords, occasionally they omit one or more of them and or include intervening harmony. Any additional chords, however, typically don't affect the cycle chords relationship but merely prolong one or more of them. I'll return to these points later in the video. Using idealized voice leading moving successively in either direction beginning from any one of the cycle's chords, each triad shares with both of its neighbors two common notes. Against these static notes, a changing third note alternates between ascending and descending semitone motion. Major and minor triads are also alternated. A single common note and two parts moving by semitone in contrary motion connects triads separated by a single chord. With this motion, depending on whether you begin on a major or minor triad, the same triad type is maintained. Parts moving by semitone in contrary motion, two one way and the third the other, connect triads separated by two chords. With this motion, major and minor triads are again alternated, as is the individual part's motion. Moving from a major to minor triad, for example, two parts descend while the third ascends, and the reverse motion occurs moving from minor to major. Between the chords of a hexatonic cycle, then, voice leading is achieved solely by semitones and common notes, with the result that in different contexts, any one of the triads may be considered the tonic. This harmonically open sound has led many composers to use hexatonic scales and cycles to create certain moods or atmospheres, such as Bartok's layering of hexatonic scales to create a feeling of uncertainty in sections of the third movement of his concerto for orchestra. The harmonic openness of the cycles also means they are often used in modulatory or developmental sections or in any location where a definite key centre is not desired. In this excerpt from the first movement of Brahms' Concerto for Violin and Cello, which is an often quoted example of a cycle lacking intervening chords, the cycle is modulatory, taking the work from the key of A-flat major towards the tonic key of A minor. Here the cycle can be heard as being based on an E augmented triad, with the root notes of the A flat chords enharmonically sounding as the augmented triad's third degree. As in this example, composers typically choose a hexatonic cycle relating to the context in which it's being used. Brahms's choice here of the E augmented triad connects the key of A flat major to the dominant chord of A minor, with the cycle's A flat chords, as mentioned, harmonizing the augmented triad's third degree, and the returning E major triad treated as A minor's dominant seventh chord. Rather than thinking in terms of a hexatonic cycle then, these composers were probably relating the root notes of the progression's chords to the degrees of an augmented triad creating an equal division of a major scale into chromatic major thirds.
in this excerpt also, the A sections of the Adagio's ternary form essentially remain in the work's tonic key of B-flat major. Beethoven connects these two framing sections with a B section using the chords of a hexatonic cycle based on a B-flat augmented triad dividing the work's tonic scale into chromatic major thirds. Unlike the Brahms example, however, Beethoven here includes with some of the cycle's chords their dominance and or subdominance. These additional chords, as mentioned earlier, however, don't detract from the hexatonic cycle's progression, but simply prolong some of the progression's chords. I also mentioned earlier that one or more chords may be omitted from a hexatonic cycle. In this song, for example, Schubert connects the end of a section in G major, which is now moving into its relative key E minor, with a return to the work's tonic key G minor, using a partial hexatonic cycle, which may be heard as being based on a G augmented triad. Schubert connects the keys of E minor and G minor by moving from E minor's dominant major through its parallel minor to a G minor triad and onto an E flat major triad, which along with the additional C sharp note sounds as an E flat German augmented sixth chord on G minor's submediant degree. The German augmented sixth chord then resolves to a cadential 6 4 progression in the key of G minor. Here Schubert omits the G major and E flat minor triads from the hexatonic cycle as they're not required and could have potentially obscured the modulation. Just as composers, we're probably not using the label hexatonic cycle to explain these chord combinations, but we're instead relating them to the degrees of an augmented triad and the equal division of a major scale. So too, the analysis of these chords may be based on a similar augmented foundation connected by comma notes and semitone motion. Another perspective, however, may be achieved using triadic transformation theory, which labels the successive motion between the cycle's chords using P to indicate the motion between parallel major and minor triads, and L to indicate motion between triads which share a minor third and whose root notes are a major third apart. Motion between triads separated by a single chord use compound transformations. PL to indicate motion between major triads, and LP to indicate motion between minor. And the transformation H indicates motion between triads separated by two chords. These motions may also be represented on a tonnets on which the hexatonic cycles occupy the southwest northeast diagonals and are flanked by augmented triads. The motion of all the previous examples descends through the relevant cycles, and in each, the augmented triad on which the composers were perhaps basing their progressions are on the left. 
the Brahms and Beethoven excerpts move through the complete cycle using P-L transformations, while the Schubert cycle begins with a P transformation before using a compound LP transformation to bridge the missing G major triad to then end with an L transformation onto E flat major harmony. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.